From John chapter 5, John makes it plain that there were elements of the Jewish society that really wanted to be rid of Jesus. Society was very diverse, but many of these groups would come together to oppose Jesus because Jesus was becoming too popular. Anybody who wants power doesn't want somebody else having more power. Herod had executed John the Baptist. The main reason is that he didn't want a popular uprising of people following John the Baptist and unsettling his power. So in John chapter 6, when the Jews began talking about making Jesus king by force, Jesus quickly left that area and spent much of the next six months in Gentile territory, going up to Tyre and Sidon and across to the Decapolis on the eastern side of the Jordan. For it was not safe to him to remain in Herod's territory or in Judea. And now the Feast of Tabernacles has come, his brother saying, you should put yourself forward. But he said, no, my time is not ready. You go up to the feast. But when his brothers had gone up, then he also went up to the feast, not openly, as it were, but in secret. Then the Jews sought him at the feast and said, Where is he? And there was much complaining among the people concerning him. Some said, He is good. Others said, No, on the contrary, he deceives the people. However, no one spoke openly of him for fear of the Jews. Now about the middle of the feast, Jesus went up into the temple and taught. And the Jews marveled, saying, How does this man know letters, having never studied? Jesus answered them and said, My doctrine is not mine, but he who sent me. If anyone wills to do his will, he shall know concerning the doctrine, whether it is from God or whether I speak on my own authority. He who speaks from himself seeks his own glory. But he who seeks the glory of the one who sent him is true, and no unrighteousness is in him. Did not Moses give you the law? Yet none of you keeps the law. Why do you seek to kill me? The people answered and said, You have a demon. Who is seeking to kill you? Jesus answered and said to them, I did one work, and you all marvel. Moses therefore gave you circumcision. Not that it is from Moses, but from the fathers. And you circumcise a man on the Sabbath. If a man receives circumcision on the Sabbath, so that the law of Moses should not be broken, are you angry with me, because I made a man completely well on the Sabbath? Do not judge according to appearance, but judge with righteous judgment. Now some of them from Jerusalem said, Is this not he whom they seek to kill? But look, he speaks boldly, and they say nothing to him. Do the rulers know indeed that this is truly the Christ? However, we know where this man is from. And when the Christ comes, no one knows where he is from. Then Jesus cried out as he taught in the temple, saying, You both know me, and you know where I am from. And I have not come of myself, but he who sent me is true, whom you do not know. But I know him, for I am from him, and he sent me. Therefore they sought to take him, but no one laid a hand on him, because his hour had not yet come. And many of the people believed in him and said, When the Christ comes, will he do more signs than these which this man has done? My name's Arthur and I thank you for joining me as we join the discussion about Jesus. Where is he from? Is he from heaven, which he claims? Is he just from Nazareth? Is he true? Is he a deceiver? Does he have a demon? How come he speaks so boldly? Why is there so much discussion about this man? We read John 7 verses 10 to 31. Jesus has gone into the temple. It's one place that he feels somewhat safe because in the temple are many people who love God, who gather around him. 
even though the temple authorities oppose him, they have to tread very carefully lest they cause a riot because the diverse society does have many people who love God sincerely. And we get a clear picture that there's a lot of discussion about Jesus among ordinary people and that the various groups are arguing against him, criticising him in whatever way they can. Yet when they come and stand before Jesus, they find they cannot win their argument. These people are very impressed with Jesus. How does this man know letters, having never studied? They know Jesus had not been to school in Jerusalem. So how could he know the scriptures so well? How could he teach so well? Now the various groups all had their own traditional doctrines. The Pharisees, the Sadducees, the Essenes, and within each of these there were subgroups. Just as we have denominations, Christendom has major groups of Orthodox, Catholic, Reformed, Baptist, Charismatic, and each major group is divided into lots of subgroups, which have some things in common, but there are details that differ. And so you can have strong debate between people of different groups. And at times there's been great acrimony between groups, at other times less. Jesus was bringing a new doctrine. He didn't fit in with any of the groups. He aligned himself a little bit with the Pharisees, but then he criticised them vehemently for not being true to their teaching. As people listened to him, they knew that what he was saying differed from the traditional teaching of the various groups. Jesus says, My doctrine is not mine, but his who sent me. If anyone wills to do his will, he shall know concerning the doctrine, whether it is from God or whether I speak on my own authority. Had Jesus just made up another story and was he just seeking to be popular based on his own brand of teaching? Well, his claim was that, no, this was the true teaching of God. It came from God. And if you are sincere in seeking God, then you will recognise the truth of this doctrine because it agrees with the teaching of the Old Testament prophets. He's not coming to seek to glorify himself. He seeks the glory of God. And it is true then that there is no unrighteousness in the person who seeks to glorify God. But that's not what they're doing. Many of them want to kill him, using the excuse that he is breaking the law by healing on the Sabbath. Did not Moses give you the law? Yet none of you keeps the law. Why do you seek to kill me? Now, they protest. Who wants to kill you? You have a demon. So we have the expression, you demonize a person when you don't agree with them. You say that they are insane, they are mad. And there was no shortage of people accusing Jesus of being paranoid. But Jesus comes back to the issue. The issue is, I healed a man on the Sabbath, evidently referring back to his previous visit, recorded in John 5. But you work on the Sabbath too. When a baby boy is born on one Sabbath, you circumcise him the following Sabbath, on the eighth day, to keep the law of Moses. And you are angry with me because I made a man completely well on the Sabbath? Do not judge according to appearance, but judge with righteous judgment. He's saying, you are accusing me of being evil and of breaking the law. But indeed, I have done something good. The work that I do is the work of God. Everyone must make a decision whether they will follow the Lord Jesus or not. He has come with new doctrine which does not contradict the old, but fulfills the old and amplifies the old. But everyone was comfortable with their own doctrine, and they didn't want to hear the doctrine of God.